Hey guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of Fossil Friday. So today we're finally going to scrub all those fossils that we saw last week. So it's going to be a pretty chaotic video and I've got loads of pots now that we can wash them in. So they're plant pots actually and before I put plants into them I was like it's a perfect use of tubs. So the ones that don't have holes in the bases we're going to use to soak six billion ammonites. So let's get to it. I really wasn't joking. Look at all these pots. Obviously that one's not going to work but most of these don't have holes in and I've been testing them out. So one of them did have holes in hence the big puddle but I thought ones like this we can just use as kind of tubs. I got very lucky one of my neighbours was getting rid of them all because they had planted all their potted plants but I was able to get all of these bad boys so I can't wait to have some fun with those but in the meantime let's get soaking. So with these fossils the prep should be fairly straightforward because all they need is a really good scrub because they're just covered in mud. Um, some might need a little bit more prep with a dremel or just some like hand chisel tools but the majority is just they're just very dirty i mean you can probably see the water has now completely changed color <laughs> so i think this is going to take a few for the larger fossils at least a few buckets just kind of giving them a good scrub and then changing the water over and before you do any prep to a fossil if they're kind of hardy fossils like this you should just make sure that they're completely clean of any dust or mud because otherwise whilst you're prepping things like the mud is just going to get in the way and affect your visibility so it can make such a difference giving them a good scrub. Obviously if they're quite fragile you need to be careful but these ones are pretty industrial <laughs> so I don't need to worry too much. Oh we've got fossils in the back here. Don't know if you guys see there's a lovely little Dactyliosaurus ammonite on the back and there's other ones as well. So that's always the fun of getting the mud off is you kind of you see loads more details of a fossil. So let's just scrub 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 scrub. But I'll have to change this water soon because this is already getting, I can't even see through it. You would never know there's a fossil in there. <laughs> but it's already cleaning up a lot nicer. I just realized I didn't really show you the before, but I'll link down below the video where I show you all of these amazing fossils behind me that I found all in the same fossil hunting trip. So it was pretty crazy. So this is one of the larger ones I've found and I'm just excited to see what the centre is actually like. And this is cleaning up quite nicely. So for this I just use old toothbrushes. They work really well to kind of get in the grooves, especially of ammonites. And these ones are soft bristle ones. Um, and I just find that if you're worried that a fossil might get damaged, if the bristles are too kind of strong, you can get all different like strength toothbrushes. So you can also go for children brushes, they're a lot softer. So you can kind of shop around and get all different types of toothbrushes. They're just a really useful tool to kind of clean fossils. I feel like I'm a toothbrush salesman <laughs> trying to sell other uses of toothbrushes, but they're very useful. So just because they're no longer good for your teeth doesn't mean they're not good for rocks. So scrub, scrub, scrub. Mm -hmm. I'll probably wash a few more in this water just to get that like really mucky layer off and then I'll um, change the water out for some cleaner water. Scrub, 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 scrub. I'll speed this bit up so it's a bit more entertaining for you guys.
the amazing thing with this specimen is actually the keel. I've never seen one like this, so it's not all the way around. But look at the detail on that there. How prominent that is. So you can even see it from the front, so it's round here and then it's also a little piece here. But I'm trying to get it to show the detail. Look at that. How unusual. Well, they always have keels, but that is unusually prominent. At least in my opinion. Look at that. It's literally like a stuck on kind of stick around the edge. That's incredible. That is a keel if I've ever seen one. Wow. Amazing. So if we take another ammonite of the same species, so here is a harposterus as well. So it doesn't have this one I doesn't even it this is probably a bad example. I can't even see any keel on it really. It's not prominent at all. And then that one's probably a very weathered example. But this one's very unusual as well. Look at the texture on the surface of this one. That's almost, it looks like it's gone through like chemical weathering before it became fossilized. Oh, look at that, it's been completely etched out the surface of the shell. Look at that. It's really unusual. So these are all the same species, but they are sh showing up very differently in fossils. So we've got this one with the unusual keel. We've got this one with the unusual kind of weathered surface. Then this one has been kind of deformed a little bit. So if we look at this one, you can literally see, you see the indent here, and then all the sutures are actually popping out because it's almost been like bent whilst it was being fossilized. So it's like being crushed and then fossilized. So it looks really unusual actually. Because you can see it's all crushed, but it's completely like they're not cracks that will crack. That was done before it became a fossil. That's incredible. So you can see the amazing sutures popping out like a jigsaw puzzle. Look at that. So these might all be the same species, but they are definitely not the same fossil. They are all quite unique in themselves. And then this one's kind of a little bit deformed. So like the last specimen, the middle of it's almost been pushed forward. So you can see the middle kind of pokes up a little bit rather than goes in. But this is just a really lovely specimen. Because you've got the sutures popping out there as well, but you've got all the lovely kind of curved ribs here. And this one is only half of it. So this side is completely eroded, which can happen sometimes. So this one doesn't have a keel either. Um, because if we were to prep, if we were to take all this matrix off and all this rock, there would be no bottom to the fossil. So this side of the fossil is completely eroded. So actually I say the base, it's probably the top of the fossil that got eroded. So it probably fell to the sea floor like this. And so this side was all eroded down before the next layer of sediment kind of made its home on top of it. Just like that. But that side is perfect. <laughs> washing five Harposterus ammonites and I thought I'd lay them all out so we can just see how they kind of differ from one another. So we'll start with the largest one that I cleaned first. So you can see here it's got a lovely kind of outer world with all those ribbings and then that really unusual keel. Excuse the fact that I only have one now painted on each hand. 
um, but the center of this one isn't quite there and it's just been infilled with sediment you can see but we have got this inner whirl here or a fragment of it so I think I'll clean that up a little bit more with the Dremel just to get some more of that matrix out but the overall ammonite I think is in pretty good condition and it did have some smaller ones on the back but those ones did fall off in the cleaning process so I could probably get this whole lump off because this one is actually not so bad on the underside so this one is pretty good both sides and it has that really unusual keel so I'm quite intrigued with this one because I haven't seen one or I haven't noticed them having such a prominent keel like this I think normally it breaks off whereas you can see here it's broken off kind of in sections but then it's got that really long section there still with it on which is quite unusual so let me know if you know any more about that but that's this one so it looks pretty cool and I will put a layer of paraloid on all of these once they're fully dry then we have this one which actually is a lot cooler than I realized so when this one was covered in mud I had no idea it had so much kind of texture underneath so this one's gone through a lot of shit um, I think by the looks of it so it's almost has its shell like partially dissolved so look at that so that is the outer whirl but the dissolving kind of continues all the way in so I think this happened kind of after it fell to the sea floor so it's almost like been weathered or eroded by something but we still have the ribs on the outer bit here but again this one doesn't have a keel or not one that has survived at least and the other side of it is still there so you can see the ribs on both sides but that one is in the inner worlds are actually in pretty good nick considering how eroded the outer ones are so you can see it kind of spirals all the way in so I think they're very cool I love the fact it's the same species but just so much variation then we have these two now these ones have gone through a bit of deformation so the suture lines are properly popping out here so all of this detail I couldn't quite see when the mud was all over it and there's literally like a jigsaw piece here like look it's literally sticking out so if i turn it on its side it's its own little piece so it's amazing that that is not going to fall off so it's just this kind of like extra piece and it perfectly will fit next to it it's just kind of been pushed up and you can see all the cracks all the sutures and also this one has a pretty good center on it considering what it's been through and I love the whirl here the detail on this with the the fine ribs and the suture lines it's just really really cool but then this side of the ammonite is non-existent so this one is just a one-sider but that's okay because this side is rather spectacular so I'm quite happy with that and the color of this one is also quite a lot stronger than the other ones so if I compare, you can see this one's like just a bit duller compared to that one. So you just never know how fossils are going to turn out. And then this one is beautiful. So it's almost glossy without any paraloid on it. So that's not water. That's just how it's being preserved. So this one's in really good nick. And again, it's kind of been a bit deformed, but we've got most of the center there. And then we've just got all these kind of little suture fractures but i just see it as a really cool like jigsaw made by nature i just love it when they pop out but they're still in place i mean look at it here how can you not love that you just see the detail of the suture line when it pops out because when it's all smooth like this it's hard to kind of see what's going on but when it cracks out you can actually see all those little indentations they're so complex on these harposterous ammonites i just i i love them Right, look at those and then I thought I would finish off with a smaller one but this one was quite funny when I was prepping it the whole middle came out so with these ones when they're filled with mud you can't always tell so I didn't realize but this one doesn't have a center so I could turn this into a very hefty pendant but I think it might ache my neck after a few hours but the actual ammonites in okay condition um, I thought it was going to be a bit better because I thought the center was going to be there but you can see here the ribbing on this harposterus they're a bit kind of coarser and more spread out if I compare it to the ribs on this one so even though these are the same species the ribs are different so they're the same shape same species but some different stuff's going on so I'd love to do some detailed kind of studies within the same species just to see how they vary 
um, and actually like collect these properly from layers rather than ex situ um, just to see how they kind of evolve with time because it's very interesting to see when like see the same species next to each other to see those little differences I'm still so obsessed with this keel it just almost looks fake <laughs> it doesn't look like it should be there it's just so peculiar that's amazing that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed today's episode of Fossil Friday. If you did, please like and subscribe. And I'll also link my other social media down below if you'd like to follow me on there. But it's been a lot of fun comparing the same species. I love doing this. I think I did a video on it quite a few years ago now. So I, I need to do more of them because I collect a lot of the same species but it's very interesting to actually put them all next to each other and there's kind of a few main species I collect so I can do it with quite a few and um, so it'd be interesting to kind of compare them all so maybe I'll do that in the future but I hope you're all doing well thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time